Hello, I wanted to talk to you today about sleeping or when you sleep or, or not when you sleep and what you can do if you don't sleep particularly well. And the reason I'm doing this chat is because so many of my clients after a, a class comment on how well they're going to sleep that particular night. And which implies that the other night, you know, the sleep isn't quite as restful or quite as quite as nice as after a yoga class. And I remember that before I first started doing any yoga, I went through a phase where I was not sleeping well at all. And that's how I got started with yoga, basically, because it was just after Lara, my oldest girl, was born. And I went through a phase of, despite being really tired because I just had a newborn baby and, you know, juggling all of that, I just could not sleep. I would lie awake at night and, you know, just turn and turn and turn, not manage to sleep. And it got to a point where I was busy during the day, I was tired in the evening, but when it came, like when bedtime was upon me and I had to go to sleep, it actually made me tense because I just knew I was not going to sleep properly. And obviously being tense about not being able to sleep just makes everything worse. So I just could not sleep. So much so that I went to the GP hoping that she would prescribe a nice little pill and, you know, nice and easy solution, help me sleep better, and that was that. And so we had a chat, and rather than just giving me the little pill, she suggested, she asked me if I had ever tried yoga, which I hadn't. And well, I did at university, but not for very long. And then she suggested that I do try yoga, that I try and find a yoga class. So I did. I went, found a yoga class, and I think the following Friday or so, off I went to my first Dru Yoga, um, mummy and baby postnatal yoga class. And I have to say that that was amazing. It was like bordering on miraculous. Oh, well, I slept that particular night. I still remember because I hadn't been sleeping for ages. And then suddenly that night, I really, really slept well. So... It got me thinking, you know, and obviously I carried on going to yoga. And now when I hear my clients saying, oh, after a yoga class, I sleep so well. I thought, well, what can we do? What can we all do on a day to day basis so that we sleep properly? So, you know, like, for example, at the moment, I have absolutely no problem sleeping. And um, but there are a few routines, a few habits I got into that make sure that I do sleep well at night. So that's what I wanted to share with you today, because you know what it's like when you don't sleep well. If you don't sleep well, you're tired the following day. And when you're tired, you feel uncomfortable physically because you feel colder. You can feel hungrier because you haven't got as much energy since you haven't slept well. So you feel the need to compensate by wrapping up warmer or, or eating more. And you can feel a bit achy because you've been tossing and turning. So the muscles are tense. And then emotionally, you're tired. So you've got a lot less patience, you can be a lot more, you know, your fuse is a lot shorter because you haven't recuperated from the day before. So sleeping properly is really, really crucial to feel good. You know, if you don't sleep well, you can ask any mother of a young child, not being able to sleep well is bordering on, you know, is bordering on torture. And it actually used to be a torture method. People would stop uh, inmates in certain prisons to sleep. They would stop them from sleeping altogether, keeping them awake for days and days and days. And that was a torture method. It's sleep is that important that if you deprive it, you are torturing that person. And I know so many people have got issues, not to that extent, of course, but are not getting the quality sleep that they need, um, that they need every night. So what can you do about it? Well, there are three things that I do every single day and that help me sleep peacefully every night. And I've taught those techniques to some of my clients and they've commented as well that they've been sleeping so well. So the first thing that you can do is move. At some point during the day, move. A lot of us have got very sedentary lifestyle where we're at home, we drive to work, we drive back home, or if we work at home, we're on a chair, we're in front of a computer, 
we don't, if we don't get out of our way to move, to do some kind of exercise, we don't. So in order to sleep, your body needs to be tired, physically tired, not just mentally. So every day, try and find the time to move. It could be a 10 minutes walk in the morning before going to work. It could be 10 minutes walk after work or going for a walk at lunchtime, especially now that the mornings are dark and the evenings, the afternoons and evenings are dark. Going out at lunchtime is a, is a great idea. So first of all, the first thing you can do is find the time to do some kind of exercise. If you don't want, if you know you're finding it too cold outside, you don't want to do anything outside, you can, you know, find a video on YouTube, do something at home, maybe use uh, some weights. I don't know. Basically, first, exercise. Second thing you can do is establish some kind of a routine in the evening. For example, my routine is I go upstairs, I get ready for bed, I get into bed and I've got my Kindle. Regardless of what time it is, I'm going to read a little bit, I'm going to put my Kindle down, I'm going to list in my head the three things I feel grateful for during that have happened during the day. I'll get to that later. And then switch off the light and I go to sleep. So that's my routine and that works for me. So for you, find a routine that day in, day out, you can pretty much stick to. Regardless of how busy you've been during the day, regardless of how late you go to sleep at night, have a routine that so that your body, your mind starts thinking, oh, it's unwind, it, it's bedtime. You know, it's a bit like very, very young children. When you want young children to start sleeping, you establish a routine, don't you? Where they have their dinner, they have their bath, and then maybe you read a story, and then it's time to for bed. And by keeping to those four elements, pretty much all the time, children get into a routine where they know that after dinner comes bath, after bath comes story, after story, time to sleep. It's the same for us. If we change our habits every single day, by the time we get to bed, we're all alert because stuff has happened that wasn't expected. Whereas if every day you've got the same unwinding, getting to bed routine, you're going to prepare your mind. You're going to prepare it to switch off a little bit. Yeah, it's stuff I know. It's a routine. Next step is bed. So that's the second thing you can do. Establishing a routine in the evening, whatever that looks like for you, but sticking to those elements of the routine pretty much day in, day out. Now, the third thing you can do, and I have listed that, I have mentioned it uh, when I was talking about my routine, is gratitude. Because a lot of us, we go through a day and we problem solve. We problem solve. You can be problem solving at work. You can be problem solving in your family. You can be problem solving stuff, you know, that goes on for you. So we spend our days finding things that need attending to. So finding things that need to be fixed in some way or improved on in some way. And that kind of can color your mind with a, a negative point of view. Or you can start looking that everything kind of needs fixing or needs working at in some way. And we also have, we all have, it's evolutionary, a negative bias by which we remember the, de the negative stuff a lot more than we remember the positive ones. So when you try and sleep at night, one of the most common reasons for people not sleeping is because as they start trying to go to sleep, they start replaying the day, the whole day in their mind. And, oh, why didn't I do this? I should have done that. Why did he say this? Why did he do that? You know, why did that happen? And all of those why, why, why that we've got no answers for, but basically attending to all of the things that could have been better during the day. Now, there is a place to do that, to review the day in a positive way and build on it. But there is also a place for gratitude. And that's what I do every night. Is that If I take the time to list three things that either have happened or that I have come across that I am grateful for. And it can be anything. 
It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be flashy. Just three things that have happened that you've come across during the day and that you feel, yeah, I'm glad that is in my life. And that is going to turn a bit your, your state of mind to be in a, a, in, in a much more positive way, a lot less of a worry somewhere, because you can't be grateful and worry at the same time. So if you focus on gratitude, you're a lot less likely to worry. So if you want, you can write those down, those three things. Personally, I can't be asked, so I just list them in my head and that's it. But if you like journaling, you know, you can have your journal by your bed and you can write down those three things. So that's up to you what works. So these are the three things that you can do every day. So do some movement every single day. Have a routine. Create yourself a bedtime routine of some sort that you stick to pretty much every day. And at some point in your routine, invite that habit of gratitude and of looking back at your day with in mind to find three things that you feel grateful for. So those three things are going to help you immen immensely because I know I do them and some of my clients do them and we feel amazing. We can sleep so well. There are other things that you can do. Like, for example, if you are the type to like and review your day, you can do that, but from a positive point of view. And I've got a meditation for that, which is called the review the day meditation. And during which you review your whole day from the morning to the night in a very specific way that's a lot more positive than just going, oh, this, 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 that didn't quite go well. And why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? So that's a really good tool. And for those days where you really cannot sleep, what you can do is listen to a sleep meditation. So a meditation that doesn't bring you out of it, that doesn't wake you up at the end, that you can just use to drift off to sleep. And that's something I've got recorded as well. And the reason I'm telling you all of that is because that's what those are two things that I do and really I've had a tough day. And I've got too much in my head. Those two tools, reviewing the day and then just switching on a relaxation, a sleep meditation, sleep relaxation and drifting off to sleep never, ever fails to work for me. So if those three things, if the three first things don't work, you can you can do those as well. And uh, at the moment, I've just created a little course on sleeping well. It's called stress less and sleep better because obviously the stressed, the more stressed you are, the less likely you are to sleep well. And in this course, so you've got more tips on how to sleep well. You've got a seated yoga sequence that you can do in bed. You've got the review of the day meditation. You've got a sleep meditation that you can just listen to. And you've got another meditation that you can do in bed before going to sleep. And then finally, you've got a checklist. You know, I was talking about establishing a routine. Well, you've got a checklist of what you can do morning and evening to prepare your night's sleep. And those elements put together, either put together or individually, they are going to make such a difference in the quality of your sleep, in the number of hours that you manage to sleep and in how you feel the following morning, you know. No more dragging yourself out of bed. You, you'll be able to wake up feeling refreshed, feeling rested, feeling relaxed to start the whole new day again. So, yeah, this is something that I really think can be of huge, uh, huge help for you if you find that you are having trouble sleeping. So you'll find the link um, in the at the bottom of the video. So have a look at that stress less, sleep more, sleep better course. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop me a line by email or find me on Facebook and drop me a line on Facebook and uh, I'll get back to you. Lots of love. Bye.